Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, we're going to learn about the split function in Access VBA to break apart strings into their individual field values. And as I've got it listed right here, this is a developer level video. So if you've never done any programming before in VBA, go watch this video. It's about 20 minutes long, teaches you everything you got to know to get started with VBA. And also go watch this video, I just released it. It's about the text split function in Excel. It works very similar to the split function in VBA. These are both free videos, you'll find them on my website, you'll find them on my YouTube channel, go watch those and then come on back. Okay, so here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database, you can grab a copy off my website if you want to, and I just imported a bunch of addresses. Okay, and they're uh, street, city, state, zip, all separated by commas. Now what I want to do is I want to break this down into the four individual field components, right? So I got a street, a city, a state, and a zip, and I want to put them in separate fields, just like my customer table was built, right? There's address, city, state, and zip, just like that, okay? But this is all new stuff. I imported it. Someone sent it to me in a text file or Excel. I don't know, okay? So fortunately, Access VBA has a function called split. So let's try using that in a function. Let's start by building a query. And I'll bring in that address table. Okay, bring in the address field. And I'll zoom in here so you can see it, Shift F2. All right, so the way that split works is it takes the string and it breaks it down into an array of components talk more about that in a second but basically we're going to have a zero based array which is going to be the first element is zero the second element is one two and three all right so the street address is zero so let's say the street is going to be split what's the field called address comma what's the delimiter it's going to be a comma inside of double quotes all right just like we did in the other video in the excel video all right Close that, and I want the first element, so zero. That's how you'd address it in an array. Okay, hit okay, run the query, and it says, okay, the expression you entered has an invalid dot or operator or invalid parentheses, huh? Hmm, that's how an, that's how an array is supposed to work. Let's just get rid of this and see what happens. And run it. Oh, what's that? undefined function split an expression. Hmm, what does that mean? Well, unfortunately, split is one of those functions that works in VBA, but it doesn't work in a query. So in order for us to use the split function, we're gonna have to build our own wrapper function that uses split in VBA, but can also return a value to our query. Okay, but I wanted to show you this first because this is one of the comments I always get from people. I get this undefined function split an expression. Why? Because you can't use split directly in a query. Okay, so let's close this down. Save changes, no. Let's approach this from another direction. I've got a form that I built here. It's just address F. It's real simple, single form. It's got the ID and the address straight out of this table. Okay, nothing crazy. And I've got one record per screen. Okay, let's make a button and we'll use the split function here in VBA and message box the components to see how this works, okay? So let's drop a button right here. Cancel the wizard, all right? I'll put the, uh, split them right on the button. Let's give the button a name. Let's call it the split BTN, split button. All right, right click, build event. Code builder opens up, okay. Now in order to use split, you have to work with arrays. So we're gonna dim address array and then open close parentheses, which means we're not gonna specify how many items are gonna be in this array. An array is basically a list of items, okay? And we're gonna declare that as an array string. Now, if you've never done any programming with arrays before, I recommend my Access Developer Level 21 class. I've got a whole lesson on how to use arrays. Now you can load up the array with items yourself. You could say address array zero equals Bill, address array one equals Peter, and so on. That's what arrays are usually used for. But 
we're going to use the split function and we're going to tell split function, hey, I want you to load up this array with the items from that address field and I want you to split it up by commas. Okay, just like in Excel. So we're going to say address array equals split address comma and split it based on the comma delimiter. Okay. Now at this point, I'm going to message box address array two. Let's see what the third item is. Remember, they're all zero based, right? All right, so save it. Come back out here. Click the button. Bink. And there's Florida, right? Zero, one, two. Okay. If I come in here and say, give me address array item zero. And let's go to a different record. All right. Click it. I get 555 Park Avenue. So see, we basically created our own little function that declares an array, splits the field up, and then we can pull out of it whatever item we want. Well, knowing this, I can make my own wrapper function where I send it those things as parameters. I can send it the field, I can send it what item I want, and have it return back a text value to me, right? So I'm gonna write it here and then we're gonna move it to a global function, okay? Public function, I'll call it my split, slightly different name, right? I'm gonna send to it a text string as a string and an item number as a long, and I'm gonna have the function return a string, okay? And in the middle here, we need one command, my split equals split the actual split function what are we splitting? Text string, comma. What's the delimiter? A comma. You could add. You can add that as another parameter up top too. If it's not always commas, if you, you could use spaces or semicolons or whatever. I'm just keeping it simple. Okay. And then which item of that array do I want? I want item number. Like that. Okay. So send it a text string. Send it what number you want. It's going to split up that text string and then return you that item number. So up here, we can get rid of all this. And I'm just gonna say message box, my split address, comma one. Okay, click, look at that, I get Riverside. Okay, now that I got this function built, let's move it to a global function, cut it out of here, come out here, go to global module, paste it down here. Now I can use my split anywhere in the database, other forms, and even queries too. Oh, that's why I did that. Okay, so let's go back now. Save changes, sure. And let's build that query we wanted to build in the first place. I can go to query design. I can bring in my address table. Bring in the address field. All right, let's come down here. Okay, the street is going to be what? My split address, comma, zero. Because the delimiter is specified in my function, right? All right, copy that. Let's run it and see what we got first. Oh, look at that. Each one of these gets sent to that function and it returns the proper value. Let's do the next one. Shift F2. This one will be city and it's going to return one. And while we're at it, state is option or item two. And the zip code is going to be item three. And now when I run it, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? The only problem you might run into is if there's some data missing out of here, in which case, instead of declaring these as strings, you can either check for nulls or you can declare them as var uh, variants. There's all kinds of extra things you can do with this stuff. I cover it in my full developer classes in more detail. But I hope you learned something cool today. That is your fast tip video for today. And again, check out my access developer classes, specifically developer 21, where I talk about arrays in a lot more detail. Again, I hope you learned something. And I'll see you next time.
If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all. One dollar. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.